Okay, let me narrate this as best as I can. So what you can see now is I'm constructing a pyramid. I make it appear crystalline so you have an idea of what we call the etheric energy is actually, there's a lot going on there. So um, it's the dimensionality and bear with me. This is, I'm having an angle so I can see what I'm doing. So you can see as I'm accessing cyberspace, I'm using Oculus, which is a, it's called Quest 2. It's a headset that mimics, mimics virtual space. <clears throat> and I thought, how about a world premiere illustrating what's never been done before? So what you see in the pyramid right now is I'm creating a scalar frequential vortex. So the RGB colors, red, red, and ble uh, bleed. Blue, red, green, and blue represent actually what's going on in the center of the pyramid, if you can tell. Um, sorry for the bit wobbly situation because I'm looking at it directly as I'm illustrating it with my brushes. So people understand that pyramids are not tombs, they are energy generators. So now imagine soil under the pyramid. And what I will demonstrate now is I will show how under the pyramid was a ley line. And that ley line basically has energetic information running through it as an, an energetic charge. It's electromagnetic, it's photonic, it's ionic, it's probably uh, gold, it's tachyon energy, it's uh, the regular Orgon, also AKA what, what I'm putting in there now, as you can see, is the scalar wave pattern, which is kind of like outstanding longitudinal wave that, that runs through our planet. Without that, there's no electricity, no current, as you can see. As I'm lo looking, you're looking along this snake line, those remember Serpent Mound, under Serpent Mound is what that would be. And in order to siphon energy, uh, the ancient Egyptians, which were not called Egyptians, I think extraterrestrials and descendants of Atlantis, millions of years back, not 10,000 years, this is when uh, already they had left and the fall and everything had come, come into place. So they knew how not only to stabilize planets, but they also knew how whatever uh, dormant energies in planets, and um, let's say, they must have known that it, it was already part of a fallen system, but they did what they can to, to actually save and preserve <clears throat> the energy, the rejuvenation, the IQ, the remembrance past death in terms of knowing where the fields would be that accumulate such energy. So what you can see now is that the uh, energy line going under the pyramid has something like what, uh, let's call it a nodal point. Uh, some believe it's just a, a point or a vortex in that line. Some believe it's also having to do with when lines cross. The opinions differ here. I think it's both. And these nodal points emanate this energy that can be siphoned, which the pyramids are actually designed as a, a lens, a focal lens, to bring that earth energy up but that's not the only thing they do, as you can see, is they're bringing the frequency up, but they also, with the sides of the pyramid, have to bring the light frequency from four angles in. And they have to be in alignment with the stars, with what's missing now, with the magnetics, the photons, and the ions. And you need that to also reactivate the car, which they call the plasma body, which is very important. And as you can see, it's, it's a very sophisticated system when in place. Also, mind you, on top of the pyramid was a pyramidion, which is the, the capstone, which was taken. So if you see the original pictures of the Gizeh pyramid, it was dismantled. The capstone is missing. So the thing can't really, really function. You get somewhat of a resonance, but it's like very much in the basement. So to get enlightenment and turn into a super being is not going to happen overnight because the energy is, is that weak. But it's still there, nevertheless. 
and it can be measured. It is a standing longitudinal wave, partially electromagnetic, partially photonic, partially ionic, par partially tachyonic. And it has to do with the DNA. The arrows that you see that I'm pointing towards the pyramid are actually explaining that the photon, the light, is coming into the lens as an attractor and as an alignment to stabilize the it's like raw energy if you if you if you tap into uh, raw pyramidal energy what will happen it'll blow you out the frame basically a guy tried that almost lost half of his arm 20,000 volts ungrounded running because he tried to connect the the top part and the low end you have to know what you're doing when you build such devices these are very powerful devices mind you now you can see the uh, energy line under the pyramid you can see the, pho the photonic impulse running through it you know like a yeah it's a pulse frequency and um, it's probably much faster and it's tons and tons of information so this information is required to ground in cosmic energy um, as in biodynamic energy which was needed you will see also in a moment how the picture is, is now you know pretty clear but the software wasn't really designed to do what I'm doing there and, and I'm overwhelming the system with what I'm creating and I bet that oculus had no idea that you can actually do that with that so this is a, a ancient wisdoms and teachings how my Arcturian mind perce I perceived that 15 years ago on a vision quest not knowing how in, in the world will I be able to display what was shown to me holographically on a ship and now we have a holographic projector named the Oculus Quest 2. Uh, if you want to play, get it. It's really, it does something to the mind. Learning to operate in other dimensions, it's like the basic level, basic training. What you do with it is, like I want to use it as it for the divine purpose, as in visually explaining what this thing actually does. The amazing feat is what you can see here is, you know, so how the pyramid siphons the energy from the cosmic as an earthbound in the crust of the earth energy i'll show you now how the pyramid then projects a, a standing wave upward with the dna and the rna information pulsed which is kind of a system well that your your rna dna responds to the way these systems were set up so in a few i'll show you as i'm drawing in in the top pyramid like in the pyramid on in the top you also have an accumulation of energy basically it's going it's, 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 it's being amplified two times that's why it's also actually it's not recommended to meditate in the king's chamber because the king's chamber was is actually souls can descend or incend as an incension as you can call a body back it is said that uh to according to what anton park's channel is that the um isis channeled osiris after he was killed by seth or set set back into his body but then they left the king's chamber the king's chamber is not recommended to meditate in okay know this the pyramid is for environmental energy not not directly inside the pyramid you should be you should be in the lowest part or under it to get the most effect that has been measured by dr kaparov the inventor of the bio well is a thousand two hundred dollar machine they can measure your coronal field and your auric system and your organs and he can measure life force so what you see now is the standing wave that i'm drawing in to the um, you see wiggling standing longitudinal scalar wave which ultimately communicates with the body with living life force so you see the uh, um, RNA patterns in between that I'm drawing in there and this is to communicate with the life force you see that's very important and um, that is to activate living organisms on all levels with cosmic consciousness this is why these systems were built this is why these systems exist these activators 
And I'm amazed by the technology that we have available actually to display what I'm showing to you here. Right now you're in my space. <laughs> and down here I make the rules. Remember the guy in the Matrix, the train guy, who looked like actually like a train wreck? Anyway, so this is my space now. And I will, a couple of times, uh, yeah, we had a little distortion there, like a little glitch that can happen. This is all t t test versions and test programs that are not fully developed yet. Now imagine if this is full-fledged uh, PlayStation 5 3D level imaging and contrasting, real-time rendering in an environment that you're moving in. It's just freaking mind-blowing. So I was, I'm basically standing in a grid that I created in my house where I can walk around. It's like a safety parameter where I don't run into my furniture because I, can't, I literally cannot see what's in the outside world. So you go to where the carpet is, and you create it's called a guardian which is a holographic wall that tells you when you breach parameters so you don't run into furniture it's pretty funny so I'm, I'm i'm basically in there moving around you know having the space assigned to me within that virtual reality when i when i dial in i'm somewhat in a futuristic uh, apartment in a future world so from there on i create so what you see now are the toroidal field waves, and I'm only giving you the upper part. Usually it goes like an apple, it goes all the way around. You'll see that later. Because I realized the more I drew, the more I began to overwhelm actually the camera system. And you'll see in a minute, it'll, it'll begin to like really detrimentally, if that's even a word, to pixelate. Because I'm just putting so much data in there. And um, so I'll show you how if you live around the field. This is just the core frequency. This thing probably hit thousands of miles circumference. So the jungle was lush. The Nile was probably blue, clean and clear with fish. Like what the Nile looks like today is like the ecosystem is basically in the basement. Like we're done here. This needs to be fixed. And we can fix it if we actually rebuild the system and recalibrate the pyramids to the original north and south pole, not the magnetic ones, the natural ones, they still work. And also know, know this, the pyramids were gold plated as a superconductor. So three things that people don't know what actually belong to a pyramid to actually make this a fun functional vortex generator capacitor. Like a, it's, it's like a solar fractal capacitor, uh, which is, uh, Similar solar scalar, it's, it's 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 in a very close proximity where these things work together. So you can see now the camera is already beginning to suffer because I'm just overwhelming the system with with data. With the inventors, I don't know what they had in mind, how much you can do with it, but you can overwhelm the system. When I first started creating that, um, it was um, insane. My computer would glitch, numbers would glitch, the number codes wouldn't read. This is a completely new system of data that I'm introducing to a, to a system that, that the designer had not in mind that this can actually be done with it. He probably knew, okay, that's a lot of things possible, but you see, like I make something possible that you haven't seen before. This is a world premiere. Uh, um, don't watch it on a 360 television. You get motion sickness. Watch it on a small TV. This is also work. I created these designs to activate your mind, to actually, in your mind, anchor in how these systems work, that you know how they actually activated you. So this is like also my gift to you. And trust me, it's work. I expanded the camera view, then the sound drops, then the sound lags, because the system doesn't have enough computation power to synchronize the microphone uh, and the drawing and the pixel and the, the, the frame refreshing rate with these things. See, I'm showing you a little vortex particular point. I'm going down the ley line in the earth. I'm going up inside the pyramid up close that you can see what this looks like. It's pretty trippy. It's like, it's like freaking a trip. Like I feel like I'm tripping every time I'm in there. I'm, I'm, I'm basically in the inner matrix of an illusion that's a simulation. And I'm fully aware of that, but I'm using that to transmit divine knowledge. So from a distance, you can see the, the beautiful uh, power plant activating the fauna and flora, the field, the surrounding environment. And this is what I receive in my mind, how these systems work. So let's see, we're going to go into Orgon upgrades now.
Let's hope I don't have to edit this. And I'll show you what a lot of organizers do not know, how you use the organ layer. So the first layer is a galvanic plate. Then we're using sheep's wool or plastic for it. You need a, con a conductive layer and an unconductive layer. That's how the pyramids are also actually built. They're organic, but that's only a third of the math. So Wilhelm Reich used a third of the math. Tesla used another third. And um, a Mr. Victor Gauss, I think, uh, in the magnetics, used another third. I put three thirds together and I got 360 degrees of another development, which I call the holodynamic trinity. I will write a book on that. It's pretty complex. I'll also, in my channeling, I receive or I memorize that the uh, photon is not massless, as in, in Webster Dictionary. It's not a massless particle. It is actually having mass. Because in order for you, as you can see, to perceive dimensions, you need mass. The transmissions to be received, you need something physical. Uh, this all etherical and spiritual and can't touch and we don't know. Um, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. So we're not dealing with that. So the organ layers I showed you, seven dimensional layers, steel, steel wool, sheep's wool, steel wool, sheep's wool. In the end, you have a steel plate or a galvanic plate. I will make another video on how specifically going to organ. That's how you upgrade your organ. So if you pour in layers, pour a crystalline layer, resin, little film, then stainless steel, not brass, not aluminum, all that stuff that you mix. And then the next layer, make it nine layers and you have a thing that will pump more than any organ device you have ever produced. The other stuff, I know it's fancy, it's nice, but the energy is poquito, it's klein, it's little. So see here, I'm showing you the pyramid is built with a dielectric and electric, dielectric and electric, dielectric, basically conductive, non-conductive, electricity carrier, insulator, electricity carrier, insulator. And that makes it organic. When the, um, uh, yeah, see, that's where what I'm drawing is the king's chamber and the shaft pointing to Sirius. Then you have the queen's chamber, and correct me if I'm wrong, there are many, many connections, not all have been found. One shaft points to Sirius, as we know, and the other one points to Orion. We believe that was the, the conscious download into another avatar body with full consciousness. Watch the movie, um, something with DNA on Netflix, Carbon. Car uh, carbon, carbon DNA or something? Uh, altered Carbon. Altered carbon. You see where you can download your consciousness into an avatar body, run around on a different planet, put the clone body in the system, load the consciousness back to your original body, and you're back on Earth. Lose the clone body, uh, you lose the memory. So the transition has to be smooth. I think we were interstellar species and we used to do that. So what you can see here now is a meditating guy outside the pyramid. It is beneficial to meditate next to it or way, way under it. Uh, inside at the, at the height of the king's chamber it is not recommended in the big pyramids as they were they measured also in Russia a guy had built pyramids in the field out of wood and fiber and they also measured that the the levels the top level one and two were, n were not so beneficial for a life force but when you go into the basement and you go below the pyramid very very beneficial so below the pyramid and outside the pyramid to meditate is very, very beneficial. You wanna stick with that. So um, I'm going over my palette here, thinking, okay, what, what can I erase? So they see the being in the uh, uh, unfinished chamber. So the chamber under the pyramid is called the unfinished chamber, just so you know. And if you haven't studied that, I suggest go deep and study and learn. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, I'll make myself very small in this, so I'm a little sick, insignificant little little man from the side explaining to you what you see. <laughs> and let's go crazy, you know, let's use technology and blast, you know. See here, Rebel Alliance? Rebel Alliance means raw. Funny. So, that explains where the chamber is placed. Also, that chamber... Um, you have to have like as big as a house, I don't know, let's say 300 square feet at least, to get into an activation of 65%. My take is that the activation in a regular pyramid without magnetic alignment is going to be weaker because how do you anchor in photons? 
that shoot up, get the information, come in the body, and the electrons anchor it in. If our electronic system doesn't compute the scalar wave within the body, I think we're, we're having trouble here. So in order to prevent that, what you see, I'm drawing a phase conjugate circuitry. The Vesca Pisces is when two forces, A and B plus and minus meet, the center will be the eye. You know, when, what, what did Jesus say? Just as an alchemical description, when, um, when both my eyes become single and I'm, when I'm full of light, my eyes become single and I'm one in the house of my father, which actually is the kingdom of heaven and actually which is the space of the divine. You see, in the center of the brain, when you cut through the bones, you see the eye of Ra. The Egyptians knew alchemy, they, they knew anatomy, and it's all cloaked in metaphor. People don't know this. Watch those images. It's the eye of Ra, the eye of Horus, or the eye of uh, Osiris and Isis combined. The all-seeing eye, namely you, the seat of the soul. That's how you come in, so you download, and that's how you leave. But if you cannot die in a divine way, you forget who you are and you need to remember who you are. The, so what I'm drawing here is the falcon, which is the highest state of being in an avatar on a planet that is in a distortion. That was what the Egyptians kind of worshipped, is the state of Ra. That is the state of light. As in synchronized with your higher self, become one with your higher self. And embody your higher self with all your memories, all your past lives, and in one avatar as a self-realized being on the planet and that is the state of Ra. That's why I call myself Ra because I wish to attain that. It might take a several thousand lifetimes to attain that. Know that Ra means the collective as in I'm representing the collective. Here I'm adding to uh, the um, display as I'm showing this is the pyramid. The energy in the pyramid, I'm drawing a three-dimensional display of the pyramid as you can see. Um, again, forgive the camera shaking because for me the image was still because I was in that realm creating that. Uh, for, the, for the onlooker it's a little bit shaky. I'm trying my best to smooth it out while I'm rendering that. It's a lot of work. Like to, to render this and see me in frame all there, this is just not like a walk at the beach. But Earth is not the beach, is it now? It's an emotional rehab center, they say. <laughs> a lot of sacral chakra issues and past lives have to be healed here, and a lot of shat integration must take place. <clears throat> well, we're doing our best to heal this planet. So the top plate in any organ device should be a galvanic plate, as in a galvanized stainless steel plate. If you want to go into higher frequencies, you can dip that into 24 karat gold, one micron thick, but that's another story. Uh, leads into another thing. So that what I'm sh showing here is I'm using st is steel, plastic, steel, plastic in a, a nine-dimensional level. So um, let's see what's next. Okay, let's go to my scalar fractal capacitor, the box. So the top plate that I will create, I'm looking for the right, um, yeah, panel here. And this is going to be a galv galvanized steel plate. It looks a little bit crystalline because it got, it basically in the production, it got a little bigger than I wanted to. See the light is coming from the back. This is basically a room where light is simulated, form simulated, and every, every form and structure you use as a simulation. And I'm still learning how to create three-dimensional objects in space. And I believe that's how the Arcturians work, because that's what I see on the ships, even much more sophisticated. Like, like if I don't have an alignment and I'm drawing freehand, they are assisting programs on the ship they'll make that actually totally aligned. So you see this looks a little bit crooked, but this is, you know, forgive me, this is, the, this is the second time I'm using this. I've never used a device like this before. And um, 
Yeah, so yeah, I have one glitch here, little crystal shard, but never mind that crystal shard. I did not know how to erase that. I probably pushed the button twice, so I can't erase the thing. But here's the googly boogly. Here's the fun part. Now we're creating the, I'm showing you how the box actually works. So in my box, SFC module, I have orgon plates, okay? I'm not using resin. I'm using steel plates, plastic plates, or uh, uh, plastic foam um, sheets. And then I go steel, plastic, steel, plastic, steel, plastic, steel. Do you wanna have that sequence? And they don't touch one another in order to accumulate orgon energy. If you wanna do that, study William Reich. It's different than mixing all stuff together in resin and, and making a nice paperweight but with, with, with very minuscule power. You want this to be effective and powerful. Then comes the looks. So mind you, work in those layers. I did a pyramid once, which took me four days to pour because this is really, a, this is really brutal. When you have, I, I did like, I think, 29 layers and that thing was pumping energy, not even funny, but I wanted more. So what you see here, the sack is uh, photonically activated nanoparticles that I put in static bags that are shielded. So electromagnetically, they can't be touched. So I'm putting activation photons in there. So you can see this is what actually activates the photons, the galvanized plates actually show the photons the way out. Yeah, this, this entire orgon system attracts light and directs light. A lot of people don't know that. And Willem Reich didn't put crystals as an alignment in there, nor did he put magnets in there. So the energy wasn't anchored, it was just freely flown. So I have a system where I want it all anchored in. And in the base, under the photonic substance, I have a ferrite magnet that stabilizes the energy in Earth, and it has to be ferrite. Nickel, as a neodymium, is detrimental because nickel kind of distorts the field. It doesn't do what I want it to do. We want life force activated and healing energies coming through the system, and we want it to use natural energies. We don't want it to use, um, this just me testing the brush. Um, I want, the system doesn't need any electricity and the photons will emit from those bags after I've sealed the box 15,000 years before the isotopes of light inside of those uh, particles stop um, emitting photons. That's how, um, how abundant this force is. So now I'm going through uh, brushes looking for the next component to actually illustrate and show um, yeah, again testing the brush because I'm still learning the system. I don't know it all by heart. I think I'm doing not so bad for the first time. So this system also side effect produces negative ions. So I looked for something that can em emulate that ions coming from the plate, the top side. So uh, as you can see, I'm activating the plate with, um, how you say, um, negative ion little bubbles that'll I'm trying to make them come out of the system so I'm at the, going directly under the galvanized plate where they would emanate from and if you had like third eye vision that's what you would actually see you would see in these photon uh, these negative ions dancing in between the photons that I emitted from the box you have that in your house you're stabilizing the entire energy system in your house and I channel that stuff for my Arcturian self. So that's technology that's been here when you see rocks in uh, Ireland that have engravings, they partially emanate that but they're all out of alignment because Earth has been through so much, everything, everything has been pushed to a frequency where everything is out of whack. I'm bringing basically the alignment back so the dots you see around the uh, box is the vorticular field. It's like a mobile vortex. It's actually 22 pound heavy. That's how much stuff is in there. It's 12 by 12. And the height is like, I think like four inch, five inches. Very powerful, regulates 6,000 square feet 
I'll, I'll write it down in a minute, you'll see that on the side. And this is a system that will run. And that's called the SFC module, it's not listed yet because it's continuously sold out. And I studied also Dan Winter about scalar fractal capacity. And indirectly Dan labeled what I do and he said that's a scalar fractal capacity. That, that's actually what you're replicating. So what, what you have there is a holy place. A scalar machine that amplifies your intent, your thought, uh, productivity, creation, biodynamically, reorganizing and structuring, past lives, all of the alignment the soul needs is actually coming from that box. And I have people that test it themselves. There's so many uh, side effects or unknowns that we don't even know that it does. Where people go like, I didn't know it would have that effect. It's, it's, it's beneficial and you need that more than you need a Ferrari in your house, seriously. And as you can see, 6,000 SQV. That is the focal point of the energy that that thing uh, transmits at. That's, that's going actually further. You, you put fruits on there, they last indefinite, bananas forever. I put cooked rice in a glass bottle that lasted a year without rotting. It only fermented, but it didn't decay. That's what you want. I put a device in a fridge, I put meat in there, it mummifies. Um, uh, vegetables last longer, fruits last longer, food storage. Textiles, if you have hemp clothing or cotton clothing, you can charge it with positive energy and instead of 300 washes, it'll last a thousand washes because I'm changing the fabric of the substructure of the molecule. As you can see, I'm drawing a toroidal field from that box. This is what the box generates. Have that, a lady bought that for her backyard. Trees are coming back, bushes are coming back, avocado trees going from two free fruits to 50 fruits in three weeks. Grass is three times the size. Emerald green when everything is in drought. And I kind of got also the idea to build these amplification systems because Travis Walton told me in his abduction cases where the ship came down, there's a video that's very hard to find where you can see an exponential growth rate in the pine trees where the craft has uh, touched down and the scalar frequency in the field where the craft kind of picked him up was jacked for the 15 years before it faded and the natural growth rate returned. But everything was amplified by 37%. Plant life, DNA, everything biologically, the soil instead of fertilizer activated with biodynamic information. And this is with the ancient Atlanteans, Egyptians, Arcturians, Syrians, Lyrans. We all work with those uh, energies. We knew the modalities. We knew how these things worked. See, as you can see, these are systems. These are wonderful systems. And if you have sight, you can actually see how they work. For that, you need to be in a mystical state. You need to study what that means uh, to reach a mystical state. To do it sober, it can take you 80 years to reach that. That's how long the path is. The other modalities, which I will not mention, fifth dimensional creational characters will know what I mean. Hint, hint, hint. Alice in Wonderland, watch the movie, watch creational pictures, uh, look at Dali's paintings, and you have an understanding what that means to be in a mystical state. Then you are the Shaman or the Shaman, which is the altar in front of the Lord, which actually is the face conjugate be in agreement with you in front of source. That's what it means to be a shaman. I'm a galactic shaman, so I'm going a little bit more out. You see here, I'm drawing another pyramid to show you how actually the codes are drawn in, how the codes are coming in. So from the ley line, these ley lines uh, um, in, in, uh, in, in, in Australia, they're called dream lines, I think. And um, um, the... Uh, some native call it the web it's it's always the same and that connects so i'm drawing out now uh, the light language that i'll usually draw that you have seen represented in the two-dimensional form but here's the kicker that language is actually three-dimensional and i'm showing you where this goes so the language comes in yeah, i'm erasing that wanted to make it nicer in it more in alignment. So the language is coming down. Let's see, what am I doing? I'm trying to keep track of myself. Okay. So basically, if I would speak it, I would read it. Emua ne futuaria satakari e nehemua setewa tefetaria tefnut elia satahamua. And this is what's coming in. Okay. 
very complex translations, you really need to train your interface and repair your ancient brain. Not, not an easy task, I tell you. I'm still trying to fix stuff because I can't translate it all. Some things I can translate into English, some things are so high-tech, there are no words in this realm for what I'm describing. So scalar wave energy patterns connected within the pyramid and they are receiving and also transmitting codes and stabilizing divine codes because there only is divine knowledge. There only is peace when living in truth and attaining that. The other stuff is basically negativity is like when you say, I don't need this. I can do my own, you know, away from source, I can do my own. They tried it in Atlantis, the brotherhood that decided that they don't need the divine knowledge anymore, they can turn away from creator, well, they fell. Need I say more? Well, we're in a fallen system because we did it over and over and over, and always there's volunteers coming in trying to help us to fix the system, to fix fallen consciousness, to get back up, to re-establish consciousness in the avatar on earth. This is ascension. So what does that mean? Raising of the jet means raising of the consciousness in the human vessel. Hue, as in the light, the hue. Man, as in manifest. Hue, manifest. That's what the word human comes for. So, I'm again showing you light language. That's when you look at it from a two-dimensional perspective. But I'm glad I have this space where I'm creating this. So I can actually show you, it's, you see, there's space. It's a three-dimensional thing. And that is for the construct and coding in the human vessel. Very important. And when you know this, you know, this is also, it's almost like an activation reading I'm giving you. I'm changing your mind as we speak with what's happening. You understand? And you should feel different. If you feel nauseated, drink some water. I'm activating the wazoo out of possibilities that your mind links with the original template of how this is actually working. So this is uh, beyond a sales pitch. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who would sell a car like this? But for those who know, you know where to find me, you know where my store is, you know my website, ra-key.com, you know where I'm at. Uh, at the moment, um, everything is bubbling up and accumulating and going faster and faster. So the divine codes, as you can see, is called SAS. It has to do with self-aligning software. And that's how Earth is built. That's how this hologram Earth works when you work here. To establish yourself is you don't have to be spiritual, you have to know how this holographic principle works of aligning the right and divine choice and getting those codes in order. Because these codes are gates to stargates, but basically put it over there, are keys to stargates that help you ascend and transcend and expand. And with that divine choice, you manifest in 5D. If you make an undivine choice, you're not getting those keys. The reptilians, as in the Dracos, the Uru, the ancient ones tried that. Also by mixing, uh, well, if I mix a Pleiadian with the Draco, I might still get the gene codes. Well, you get half the gene codes of the Ascension plan. And we have stubborn politicians on Earth, as above, so below. We have stubborn extraterrestrial beings that think that their agenda is the agenda. I'm building an obelisk. Yeah, also know, know, this, know how to build an obelisk in this system. It's a very intuitive system. I'm very amazed of how they did that. But it enabled me to show you that an obelisk is nothing but a, a verticular informational storage for gateways. And I'm putting some information in there to show you how it's activated, how this thing, just like the pyramids, draws from the ground, gives back to the ground, sends back scalar wave frequency energy, and stabilizes the field in its surrounding environment. You imprint that with... Um, uh, petroglyphs, hieroglyphs, you create an informational system. That system will talk to the system in your body, as you can see, in the booty. And um, that helps you to align your codes. And if you have the awareness, read the keys of Enoch. That stuff is deep. That stuff is so, so deep. So let's see what we have next. Okay, I'm drawing light codes. And you can see how they continuously transmit. So this is a system that is designed to work for you. That system and every human is working, depending on how you expand your mind and how you develop your psyche, the more information you have flowing, 
the higher your cosmic IQ goes. And that's what you actually want. This is protected by a scalar shield protective wave field. Magnetic fields have their tools, I think it's called Meissner fields. And these Meissner fields are magnetic stabilization fields around your DNA. If they wield, if they wield, interesting. If the shielding is weak, your DNA programming and the transmission of such is already in trouble. And uh, I'm channeling this, so now I'm showing you actually what I'm actually channeling and I'm so happy. I, th I thought like everybody needs to be on this giant uber earth trip to see what I actually mean, but now I can actually show you what I mean. And uh, some people will be like, yo, what the heck, <laughs> what's going on with this guy? But I'm like, I'm not going by the consensus nor the status quo. I'm not, nor am I going by a patriarchal, apollonistic, expecting the return of a messiah. A type manipulated force that needs one abbot or one prophet or one being that says he resembles uh, the Almighty and you have to listen to him as a mediator because the mediator is you, the Messiah is you. Get the point. They're out of a job when you realize who you are. The second coming is the awakening of the human race. That's what's coming. So this information in itself is its own scalar field that's produced the more information in your body is aligned the more your light booty uh, has, you can say, galactic sex appeal. And labels fall apart. Anything that you have uh, earthly that you have learned will become a new perspective because we, you become the all eye seeing, the one eye. And that's the Novus Ordo Sucrorum. That's on the uh, dollar bill, which is a Nubian pyramid, which has a 72 degree angle, not a 51. This is not the Gizeh. Look at how elongated that is. Get the dollar bill, check it out for yourself. And that is the plan of activation codes for you. And this is to give you an insight of what this looks like inside of you. So I have to just see if there's more coming or if we're done here. Okay, I'm drawing my pendant with the earth attractor for the earth energy. And that's just give you a rough schematic what my pendant does. So I'm giving you a little bit of a two-dimensional look on. And you will see the information in there is its own scalar frequency. We have the cosmic substance in there. And we have the field that the key generates. So I'm drawing this field, ne uh, negative ions being produced. The key almost fits what you see behind it, interestingly. See, I'm, I'm in a three-dimensional space, so all of these images are levitating. I should have saved them as, a, as, as an image, but I, I'll do more and stabilize more and do that uh, quiet. So basically, this is the toroidal field that this pendant, the Jedi key, whether you get the Pro, which is the strongest, uh, the Pro Max or the, the uh, Jedi Master. Um, Always keep checking. Sometimes they sold out. We got a restock, so keep checking in. Don't worry. In a matter of weeks, we, we're actually restocking. Um, so stuff is fluctuating and moving fast. So you can wear a little toroidal field to get these things in your body aligned. I'm making visible what the regular third eye is not able to see. Babies can see that for the first three years. Naturally, we are walking around like power plants. We are nuclear power. And this entire system is based on what I call holodynamic uh, trinity that has to do with photons, as in biologically produced photons. They're called bions. Also Google the word bioluminescence. So you have ions, photons, and magnets. That's what you need to create holy places and vortexes. And they need to be functioning and they need to be amped up and full of power. So, um, yeah, it's a 12th dimensional beginning math, but actually don't get stuck on dimensions. It's infinite. 12 is just the base, how we coming in. I call it like the resonance 12, you know, as in a science where we be coming in on the 12th. The observation point is number 13, make no mistake. And uh, I guess on that note, I'll see you on the flip side. Peace.
Whoa!